Only once in my life has a video game ever moved me to tears. That was a couple of years ago in a video game called Rhyme, and it's not because I'm a heartless, soulless, cold machine. It's just that, for the most part, video game stories are somewhat predictable. They're cliche, and very rarely do you get something that moves you absolutely. I've been close a couple of times, but Heaven's War just pretty much did that, and it's definitely worth talking about. This is video game storytelling done about as good as it can possibly be. Let's take a look. One of the biggest problems MMOs always face, and this is for every MMO, is the ability to tell an RPG story. Because RPG stories have come a very, very long way since the early days. Not to say that early days RPG stories aren't some of the best, still to this day, ever written. And I always refer back to Chrono Trigger as being one of the most intense, heart-pounding stories ever told in an RPG, as well as in the Baldur's Gate series, and the story the list goes on. But MMOs have a difficulty, and that's because most of them ascribe to a very simple creed. Everybody should be able to play together as much as they want. That should, there should be nothing in the game that's saying you can't play with your friends. Because that's what an MMO is all about, teaming up. And often, when you present yourself with video game choices, as opposed to movies, which just play out in a linear fashion, you present people with choices. You look to any games like the Fallout series or the Witcher series, and you're constantly making decisions. And in the good RPGs, they play out in a number of different ways, depending on the path you have chosen. That's fine in a single-player environment. However, when it comes to MMOs, makes it extraordinarily difficult because often you want to present the player with choices that naturally would dictate that they can no longer associate with their friends if they went in a different way. That does not mean it's impossible. And I think it's one of the biggest issues that MMO companies of next year and the next 10 years are going to be finding ways of introducing that style into their games and finding a way to allow it to work. Because frankly, it's those weighty, meaningful choices, pardon the pun, that make things matter. However, that doesn't mean you can't tell a great, if not a fantastic, story in an MMO. That doesn't mean that whatsoever, and if you want proof of the pudding, it would be Heaven's Ward in Final Fantasy XIV. I spoke to you at length uh, in the last update I did to Heaven's Ward about how much I was enjoying the story. It had been told to me almost in a meme fashion that it was critically acclaimed, that it was just the most extraordinary thing ever. I even shipped... <laughs> Uh, two characters, which would have been Astinian and Lady Iceheart, up until the point I was in the story. Needless to say, for those of you who played Heaven's Ward, that did not work out. Uh, that did not work out whatsoever. That's, that's sad. That's really, really sad. <sighs> but, today I actually don't want to put any spoilers in this. Because I know a number of people are not actually up to where I am. Because, as anybody who's recently joined FF14, I do get to stream the game. Which means I can put in 8-9 hours a day as part of my regular work day. And that means that I moved ahead of a lot of people, including some people who work at Preach Gaming, uh, who are trying to play whatever they can when they're not doing stuff for me in the background. So I'm not going to do that. What I am going to tell you, talk to you about a little is how this storytelling can be done right, and how Heaven's Ward has reached what I would consider the number two spot uh, on my best video game stories ever told. For those of you wondering, the number one story for me is still the Shadow Man in Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, that is because that game is a single-player game, and that allowed them to afford you to make the most soul-crushing choice imaginable in a video game, and they set it up so well. But the setup is the important part here. So I guess this is more of a, a comment for anybody thinking like about Heaven's Ward, especially those of you who are prone to skipping story in MMOs, perhaps because you've got an extensive background in something like World of Warcraft, where generally reading those text boxes just isn't worth your time. Ultimately, you might end up reading something like three or four paragraphs to find out you need to go east of the cave in order to kill the ten Defias mobs. Very standard stuff, and it's the first thing, similar to Path of Exile, that turns you off from listening to a very long diatribe that ultimately results in something very, very simple, and you feel like you've had your time wasted, and so the next time you just skip it and read whatever the TLDR version is in your quest log. Let's talk a little bit about Heaven's Ward. At least the second half is Heaven's Ward. I'm about to complete Heaven's Ward's main story. I have one patch to go, which from what I can tell is going to be the setup for the next expansion for the most part, but perhaps not. And how it nearly, uh, pretty much did bring me to tears. I didn't bawl like a baby, but my eyes welled up significantly. Uh, and this involves the wonderful, and what I want to talk about and hopefully put this message out to other devs that we are working with who are working on RPGs, and you'll hear more about that in the future, 
is how important it is to take your goddamn time. In the last video, some of you responded well to me comparing it a little bit to the Marvel versus DC worlds, which many of us are familiar with, and how we saw DC's universe try and rush everything through to catch up, in a sense, to the Marvel universe. And they didn't take their time. They didn't let these stories breathe. They didn't let their characters grow. Uh, and it was a recent video I watched from Red Letter Media, um about Midnight Mass, where they applauded, and I agreed fully that they let their characters breathe, they let their characters talk, they let their characters establish a personality, a backstory, how they currently feel, how they used to feel, and how their minds are changing and evolving in a nice, slow way, which made you care about those characters. And for the the things I want to talk about today, there's basically two. Ultimately, a, uh, a storyline in Final Fantasy XIV eventually somewhat encompasses maybe 30 primary characters. And Heaven's Ward very much does that. It involves high houses of Ishgard, it involves their, their militant arm, it involves their religious wing, it involves storylines developing from a realm reborn of, with characters who happen to be nearby, it happens to involve stories that take place in lands that you haven't seen yet, which came with the expansion. So ultimately you end up dealing with about 50 characters. Now that's a lot, and it's a lot to make them important. And what did they do? They took their goddamn time. But ultimately, they had a roadmap. And recently, when 9.2 was announced in World of Warcraft, I talked at length about how important it is to have that roadmap, to say, we're starting here and we're ending there. And ultimately, when it comes to storytelling, they decided, actually, this just needs a couple of payoffs. But the big payoff, the really big payoff that really matters, is just going to be between two characters. And in order for that situation to have that level of payoff, those two characters need to feel and experience and the player needs to understand the heartache and emotion and the nightmare world that is around them. And those two characters would be Sir Emmerich and the dragon Hrelsvagar. Now, not going into too much detail of them. Again, I would love you guys to experience this. Certainly those of you who may have bought a pass and skipped in order and to get past the story, because the story is lengthy, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but to understand, this is worth re going back and playing. And it, it, it it's, it's, it, I could see now, in many ways, how upset people get. And it's like, you're not appreciating what's here. If you skip, you're not appreciating what's been done here. Now, story isn't for everybody. I'm not going to even claim it is. I know plenty of people who I could tell them it's the best book in the world. They're never going to read it. It's the best movie I've ever seen. Never going to watch it. I understand that. But for those of you who have some inkling of video game stories and maybe have an MMO past who is used to waiting just for the big cutscenes and things like that to tell you what's going on, this is a totally different experience. Those two characters are designed to be the ultimate payoff to this ending. And all of the 48 characters, however many there are, that are just the side attractions to this are all playing a pivotal role leading to this one moment and this one moment requires such a roller coaster to get there that it's unbelievable that it was so clearly paced and planned for multiple patches now i want to think think about that in multiple patches because we probably got some of you will probably say oh the story's been set out and recently uh with ties to like oh we're ending warcraft 3 which kind of technically is true with some sliding stuff in there but you can see that this is not a character that was developed a long time ago. This is a character that's new and they've tried to squeeze it in here and there and use references of past to make it make some sort of sense. This is a case of saying, no, this is where this goes. And we need all these elements to happen all along the way in order for this to work. And if we don't do that, it won't have the gravitas we want it to have. And the players aren't going to be shattered into a thousand pieces when this happens. They won't understand the weight of this choice. They won't understand how they could make two characters so distinctly different. One, a dragon who has lived practically for eternity that made a choice a thousand years ago, which reflects the same choice. A man born in a ultra-religious society and was a bastard child and all, and all those kind of things who had to make a similar choice. And between those two, they managed to bring about the end of a thousand-year war. And for good reason. Because they were able to connect on a way that makes absolute sense. And when you see that connection happen, that's when it gets you. Now, I did say it brought me to tears. That didn't. That wasn't the story that brought me to tears. What did, actually, was the send-off for a main character. Now, here's another thing that why I wanted to talk about story mainly today. Is that one thing that really baffled me. And again, this comes back to the roadmap idea. One thing that super baffled me was at the end of A Realm Reborn. 
in the space of maybe 10 minutes, they set up something like seven really important plot points with differing characters. They killed off major characters. In a space of 10 minutes, they made massive sweeping changes. Instead of having a nice tidy bow to wrap up and say, we're done here. This part of the game is done. We're going on to the next part of the game. Instead, they said, we kind of wrapped it up before. Now it's all turning into this. And very quickly, everything unravels and that nice pretty bow is ripped to shreds on the floor. And it's now time to move on to something else. And they had the goddamn balls to not address some of those things that they set up all those many years and months ago until the very end of the expansion, leaving you constantly worrying. Not worrying, but more theorizing, suspecting, questioning yourself. And I posted on Twitter, it's like, after you play this, you don't trust anybody because you're constantly going, well... <sighs> What's happened to this person? And you know, because the storytelling's done so well, that that person has a role to play. But they're letting it breathe. And there's a trust that I've already developed, even though this story's already out and I could Google it and Wikipedia it, and perhaps it all falls apart in the future, I don't know. But there's a trust that it's like, they're gonna make it happen. You know it's coming back, because they don't forget about these things. They don't just dispense with what's happened in the past they don't just leave the giant dagger in the planet and say we'll talk about it next time you know it's going to be referenced you know they're going to deal with it and you know they're going to tidy it up and as i mentioned as, as many of you will know by now that they killed off so many characters at the end of realm reborn and they did a send-off essentially to one of those main characters and they did it in a way that felt ridiculous at the start and this is what kind of pays off and it very much reminds me of the hideo kojima games is they're often seemingly ridiculous and cheesy and kind of silly. And in this case, it was the Warriors of Darkness. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> really? This is gross. This is so cheesy. Um, and at the end of their story, crushed me completely. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. And I felt again what I felt when I started a Final Fantasy XIV. Which is that the Lalafell. I was like, oh god, I'm going to have to deal with Lalafell and Moogles. And then ultimately, I ended up in love with that story. Not exactly like loving the Lalafells, but um, in love with that story. And it made me care about them. And it made me interested in them. And to have this kind of moment happen with the Warriors of Damn Darkness. <laughs> Warrior of Light. Well, we're the Warriors of Darkness. <laughs> like, okay. Sure, dude. Uh, to have that happen and to be sat here like... <sighs> oh. Is everything done right? And I, I, I hope this conversation encourages some of you, even if you skip the story, just to go back and... I'm, this is the stupid thing about FF14, which is so impossible. And recently I went through that I had to... I had a friend leave World of Warcraft uh, who was a world-first raider from vanilla. Uh, world-first at uh, Kalfazad, of all places. Joined FF14 because 9.15 did not bring anybody back to World of Warcraft. And it's like, well, I should come and play Final Fantasy. And I was like, look, dude... He's like, what should I do? What class? And he, he made all those classic mistakes that I made. He's like, what class should I play? Does my race matter? What's the best uh, gear I'm looking? You know, all the usual stuff that you would associate with a World of Warcraft game. And I'm like, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. You need to go it in a different way. And they both have their strengths. And I know World of Warcraft's not doing great right now, but they, it's still my, you know, it's still one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and trying, to, and then he skipped. He skipped the story because. And he just was like, ah, so much dialogue. Like, I can't be bothered. <laughs> there's a there's a little Lalafell queen. There's, there's a guy shouting at me and so on. And he skipped. Uh, and I've no doubt he probably won't last because it's not that... He's now at endgame. He went to jump straight to the endgame. Let's go for the endgame. Let's go raiding and do dungeons and things. I'm like, eh, it's not it's not really like that. They're, you know, it's it's not that kind of game. Uh, and he's like, okay. And I was like, come and look at the houses. And he's like, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very difficult to get... To explain it to people, which is probably why I didn't get involved in the first place. Uh, but I did... Um, I have done Alexander as well. Uh, at the moment, we're doing not doing the Savages until after I've finished the MSQ of Heaven's Ward. I'm saving that content for them. But even that story... I'm blown away, man. Every time. And I feel like a shill, but... 
it's hard to describe this content that is so old and not just go, go and fucking play it. And I know many of you watch this, you already played it. You're like, we know, ha ha, the streamer didn't know or YouTuber didn't know, but now you know. But it's also my duty to say to anybody out there who's not, who's, I just to inform you of good things, right? Just to inform you of good things. I'm going to move into the more gameplay stuff after this. Um, I, I'm going to hit the end of this story tomorrow. And then uh, we've got extremes and things that I want to do, which is the gameplay side, which has been getting better and better and better. So I'm hoping to experience that. But I just wanted to sit down and say, this is how it's done. Slow and steady. Let it breathe. And don't even show your hand. I had no idea those two characters would be the pinnacle of what this was supposed to be. I had no idea. They're in the story, but so are 48 other characters who all have their own important, well-developed roles to play. They are all there. They're all thrown in there, and they allow development of every single one of them to carry forward into the next one. And to make them stronger and better characters, or even people you look down upon now, or distrust heavily, even though you want to trust them. And that's the kind of investment and immersion you want out of your games. And it's right here, so... Thank you so much for listening. And uh, I hope that maybe have changed a few minds. I'll see you again. So there you have it. That is my current take on Heaven's Ward. And I am literally about to walk into Stormblood tomorrow uh, and see what's waiting for me there. I'll be amazed if it gets better than this, but I'm assured by many in the community it will get better. And perhaps I will be able to topple that number one spot on my best ever video game stories ever told. A lot of people keep asking me questions of things that I simply can't answer. And one of those would be like, how does it, how does the gameplay feel now? Because in your earlier Realm Reborn videos, you're very clear that you prefer World of Warcraft's gameplay. Well, I can't answer that right now because I'm essentially comparing like a Burning Crusade quality ca character. I'm not up to the end of Final Fantasy and I can't compare a current day World of Warcraft character to this. I remember when TBC Classic launched that I went back in and was suddenly awestruck by just how slow and tedious the gameplay was there. So at the moment, really hard to compare and say I was going. I will say like f straight up right now, yeah, I still prefer World of Warcraft's combat, but it is getting better. I picked up so much extra stuff for my character that I think the next expansion might bring us even closer into what I would consider really fun gameplay. And I really hope that happens as well. Along with all the housing stuff we've been doing and everything else, Evans Ward has been a magnificent journey. I, I'm not, although I am gonna reach Stormblood tomorrow, in terms of the story, I still have a supreme amount of content to do in the Heaven's Ward, and I'm gonna do that before I move on to Stormblood. So that would be Hildebrand uh, doing the Alliance raids, the big, big raids, uh, and also dealing with the extremes and the savage raids, things like that. I'm gonna be picking up all that extra bits of content before I even move on. I wanna be complete before we get forward. So be sure to check out my thoughts on the actual raiding. I have done Alexander, as you saw in this video, uh, but I haven't done it properly, uh, or at the level I would want to do it. So watch out for that one, and we'll be back with you soon. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.